once, long ago, there was an old dog, and his name was Circo. Circo lived with the farmer and the farmer's family, but Circo was getting old. He couldn't see very well anymore. His hearing was not as strong as it had been, but he still had a keen sense of smell, as most dogs do. Well, Circo, the farmer said, you're useless. You're no good to me. You can't catch the rats around the farm anymore. You've been a good dog, but you're of no use, so I'm getting rid of you. And he kicked the poor dog out of the farm, and he went across the fields, tail between his legs, until he came to the forest. And Circo went between the trees, sad, lonely, afraid. It was dark in the woods, and it was getting darker. The trees pressed in around him. And then he caught the scent of something familiar. It was the smell of his cousin, the shaggy, long-nosed, sharp-toothed wolf. They came snout to snout, and the wolf looked down at that dog and said, what are you doing here? Well, Circo told the wolf his tale, and the wolf said, mm, If you drive me from the farm, they'll welcome you back with open arms. That night, Circo spent with the wolf in the forest, and the next morning at first light, the two cousins set off together out of the trees and across the fields. And there at first light they came to the farmhouse and the dog Circo hid behind the wall and the old wolf leapt over the gate and up to the door of the farmhouse where the farmer's wife had left the little baby to take the morning air. Well, the wolf went up to that little baby and he seized the child in his mouth and carried the child away and jumped over the gate and started running towards the trees. Circo knew what to do. Circo began to bark as loud as an old dog can. Let me hear it. And he went chasing that wolf. He went chasing that wolf across the fields, and the farmer and his wife came running out of the house. Oh, our child is gone. Our child has been taken by the wolf. Look, Circo. And they ran out of the gate, and they ran across the fields, but they were too slow. And now Circo the dog had jumped on the wolf, and the two beasts seemed to be fighting, tooth and claw. There was a flurry of dust, tails and teeth. And then, oh, the wolf yelping towards the trees. And Circo, their old dog, carrying the baby safely back towards them. Why, the farmer's wife, she took her baby in her arms. Oh, my child is safe. And the farmer looked down at Circo and said, Oh, Circo, I am sorry. Why, I got rid of you. You are a hero. You are brave. You are welcome back into our family. Well, Circo went back into the family, and that night a feast was arranged, a party to celebrate the heroism of the old dog, the safety of the baby. All the villagers were invited. But Circo, as he wandered round the farmyard that day, he started to ask himself, I'm only here because of Wolf. Wolf, who helped me. It wasn't a real fight, was it? Oh, I should invite Wolf as a guest of honour at the feast. Is that a good idea? He set off across the fields and into the tree. He sought out Cousin Wolf and then could sniff the scent. He came to Wolf and said, come, be my guest of honour. And he led his friend as the evening fell across the fields to the farmyard and into the great stone barn where the feast would happen. Well, the barn was empty. There was the long table. Dog and wolf hid under the table, and now the villagers arrived. 
and the farmer and his wife spread the table with good food, sausage, borscht, and porridge. And all of the villagers sat down to eat and celebrate. And as they ate, they drank vodka. Why, there was a tremendous atmosphere. But now, Sirko went out from under the table and he fetched food for Wolf, hungry, lean Wolf. He brought sausage, bread, borscht, and porridge under the table. And the Wolf ate them greedily, for the Wolf had been long without food. Sirko and the Wolf shared the feast. And now the people, having drunk their vodka, began to sing a Ukrainian song. But that's where this story comes from, Ukraine. And the song goes like this. It means, let us drink. And it sounds like this. Vapia ma Vapia ma Vapia ma Let me hear all the students and especially the staff as loud as you can. Vapia ma What a beast! But the wolf stopped eating. I've had enough, my belly's full. It is my turn, said the wolf. Now I will sing. No, said Sirko. Do not sing, cousin wolf. The people will kill you. Let me bring you more meat. And Sirko went from under the table and fetched more sausage, bread, borscht and porridge. And the wolf ate and ate. The people continued to eat and drink as well. And they said to the farmer, look at your dog. Your dog is greedy. You should beat your dog. Oh, no, said the farmer. This dog is a hero. He saved my child. Let us drink again. And they sang louder than before. Fake your mouth. fit to burst. It is my turn. Now I will sing. sing. And the wolf turned up his nose <laughs> under the table so his snout was high and he began to sing as a wolf sings. Oh. As he sang the people stopped. A wolf here in the barn but the wolf continued to sing. The people picked up their meat knives. He stepped towards the long table. The farmer ticked over the table and there was the wolf, his eyes closed, singing as loud as he could. Sirko thought my friend will be killed did not know what to do, but then he had an idea. He took the wolf's tail between his teeth and he bit down as hard as he could. <coughs> cried the wolf, and the wolf's eyes popped open and looked around. He saw he was surrounded by knives. The wolf ran between the people. The people fell and stumbled. He ran out of the door. He tried to jump over the gate and just cleared it, although his belly was full. And the people rushed out after. But quicker than the people was the old dog, Sirko. And Sirko managed to clear the gate as well, and Sirko barked as he chased the old wolf. <laughs> out and out across the fields, out and out into the darkness where the villagers could not see, and out and out until they reached the trees. And between the trees they went, and Sirko faced the wolf, and the wolf looked at Sirko. Your world is tame. Your world is mild. I choose hunger. I choose wild. Sirko knew that he would never see Wolf again as he looked back across the fields and returned to the barn where he was greeted once more as a hero. You saved us, Sirko, not once. But twice you are a true hero, and so it was. 
that Sirko lived in the heart of that family, at the heart of that community, better loved than any animal before or since. But now and again he would go out when the moon was full and listen. And although his hearing was not what it used to be, he could make out the distant sound of his friend, his true friend, the wild wolf, singing to the moon. <laughs> <laughs>